Like, Pikmin 2 is very, very challenging in that regard. So, when you don't know what you're fucking with, and you don't know what you're messing with, it's a very different ball game. But for people that have played Pikmin for a long time, like me, it's not really that bad. See, the only really major tremendous losses I had were the groovy long legs, I think, stamping out like a good 30 of my Pikmin, getting fucked over by the manit legs with some nonsensical bullshit, and... The only other thing that I can think of where I lost a lot of Pikmin was, unfortunately, to the Sovereign Bull Blacks. So, those are only three things throughout this entire game that have presented me with any level of difficulty. And this one is a lot more convenient, catering to new players, where... Um, you can just rewind time, and you can change the outcome of events. So, Pikmin was never like that before. Like, I can guarantee you, Pikmin was never, ever, ever like that before. So, the fact that they've incorporated that into the formula strips away a lot of the identity of Pikmin, I think. And I think it pulls from a lot of the challenge that the original experience presented. And while that is both a good thing and a bad thing, I think I honestly prefer the brutality of old Pikmin more. It made you feel more engaged, and it made you feel way more remorseful when you ended up losing a large squad to things. And there was just no being able to stop it, so... Okay, I got very lucky there. Okay, so now that I know that requires 85, let's go pull out 85 ice. Oh, okay. Oh, no, okay, it doesn't work like that. Alright. I was trying to figure out what the uh, Peliposies were doing. So, I thought if you predominantly had a certain element of Pikmin, or a certain uh, higher number value of Pikmin, it would uh, go to that mostly, but I guess not. Alright, so let's bring some poison. We're gonna need them. Let's also bring 85 ice. I don't think this is gonna get any easier, but if we freeze the entire pool, that should be all the enemies. So it doesn't matter how long it's going to take to murder them, as long as they're capable of death, so... No. Ochi, come here, you stupid fucking dog. Get out of the water. Good, good. That's what I wanted. Okay, whites, come here. Tackle this thing. Actually, you know what, Ochi, you come here too. Okay, you guys get the sap. You guys kill all these things. Let me get that. Okay, so I have something I want to test real quick. I'm gonna need purples to carry that for sure. There's no way. There's my pink onion. Okay. Wait, so what did that do for me? Wait, that just blew me back over here, did it? Oh, okay, I see. Alright, so there's no point in this at all. Okay, let's leave them there then. Let's leave them there for now and head back to the ship real quick. We'll pull out 15 purples and get the giant cat. It's an egregious waste of time, but it's okay. Like I said, I did want to take my time through this area. Not that I want to deliberately sandbag and make it take way longer than expected, but I just want to explore the area to fruition, so. Okay, now that we have a shit ton of purples, that should help us pull the statue along. We'll also bring Ochi for some added insurance, so we'll do that. Speaking of which, let's hop on Ochi real quick. And then we can send both him and the purple Pikmin after this. There we go. It's odd to me that a giant cat wouldn't break the ice. Like, the logic that you have to freeze the pond over is one thing. But to add a shit ton of purple weight and to add the cat to it is weird. So this is mainly an issue that I had with Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Which is a completely irrelevant game at this point, but just to put this out there. So Tears of the Kingdom incorporates a lot of physics, 
but those physics aren't always consistent. It feels like the game works them in when it wants to, but sometimes when logic would reason that something would happen a certain way or something would be gravitationally affected by the way you maneuver something, it just doesn't work the way that you thought it would, and it's really annoying, so the physics in that game are kinda wacky. And I don't really like it. I prefer the traditional Zeldas. So as big of a fan of Zelda as I am, I don't think I'm ever going to be streaming Tears of the Kingdom, and I don't think I'm ever going to be streaming Breath of the Wild either. Though I did prefer Breath of the Wild over Tears of the Kingdom by a long shot. But we will definitely play the classic traditional Zeldas. And I don't mean the ones on the SNES or the Super Nintendo. I mean the 3D era ones, like Ocarina of Time, which I've already played. Um, I ran Master Quest, but we will also be doing Skyward Sword. We will also be doing Wind Waker. We will also be doing Twilight Princess. And we will also be doing Majora's Mask as well. I can't say for sure when, but they are definitely on my cards. And I definitely want to run another Zelda soon. It's been far too long since I've played a Zelda. So I'll see what I can do, and I'll see what I can mix around, and we may tackle another Zelda adventure soon. Zelda is a very large time investment, though, so I have to make sure that I'm doing it at a point in time where it's reasonable to do so. Subterranean Swarm. I love how sticky it is down here. Plus, I had snacks walking over to me. Non-stop, two of them were really big. Okay. Subterranean Swarm, then. Okay. So it's recommending me flying in rocks. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to put away five of these rocks, I think, or ten of these rocks, and we're going to be supplementing them with purple Pikmin. Reason being is I don't know how bad these caverns are going to be, and if these caverns end up being tremendously difficult and I end up losing a large number of Pikmin, I want to be able to carry large objects, and I'm going to need purple Pikmin for that. So like I said, the previous Pikmin games were incredibly fucking grueling. They were rough, like they were hard. If you didn't play on your shit, you got punished very heavily and there was just nothing you could really do about it. Okay, so we have a blue man up there. I'm not worried about the blue man right now. We have two blue men. Oh boy. Great. Okay, can our flying Pikmin get that? Yes, they can. Okay, so d definitely... What are they doing? Come here. Why are they flying over to that? What is the logic there? Like, carry the thing that I threw you initially onto. <laughs> it's just odd, but okay. Right. So, let's take care of this. Okay, the rock Pikmin are definitely good for those. That's good to know. I love how the Pikmin each have a dynamic to them that makes them more effective against certain things. It really plays into the strategy elements that are present in Pikmin. It's very cool. Actually, do I want to break that? If I break that wall, will he stay in that relative area, or will he come through? I mean, I suppose it doesn't matter, because what I can do is I can do this. Fuck you, asshole. Oh, that's not good. I just expected him to straight up die. He did not just straight up die. Okay, there's no cooldown for that. Kill him. Okay, he's dead. Okay, so I can't effectively kill them. That's good. So it seems to be very consistent. There's no cooldown on knocking them over, so that's really good to know. Let's kill that asshole. Then let's just get all this shit at once. There's another purple flower if I need it. See, like, right there, I know I commanded the proper number of Pikmin to be able to carry him. And then for whatever reason, it went from 12 to 11, and I don't know why. I don't know what causes that. Okay, so we have all the treasure in this area. 
He's blocking a pile of material that I really want. So hold on. If I try and command them to carry that, which way do they go? Okay, they made it. Good. Okay. Let's leave that guy alone. I'll leave him here. I'm not really that concerned. He can stay. Okay, so there were not a lot of treasures in here. Wait, I lost a Pikmin. One must have died, and I didn't notice. I don't know what would have killed it, though. Maybe the uh, first initial blue asshole that I fought. Okay, that's fine. We can withstand losing one Pikmin. That's okay. Now, if I lose, like, five or ten or something, I might be a little bit miffed. Five is not that big of a loss, but I do intend to be incredibly stingy, so... That's fine. Alright, what's in here? What does this level have? Please no Bulblaxes. God forbid they put any Bulblaxes. Wait, hold on. I knew it. Okay. No, Rocky, come here. Okay, this is how we're doing this. This is how we're gonna do this. Where is safe? Where is safe? Or is nowhere safe? Shit. Shit. Okay. That's fine. Damn it. That's unfortunate. That's fine, though. We lost a Pikmin. That's okay. That's fine. Okay, so I gotta watch for fleas. Okay. This is a cool level. I like this. I like this quite a bit. Okay, so there's no danger over here. Okay, we are gonna disband. It's not a very good area to disband, but we're gonna disband. But my problem is, is I can't disband them right here, because they're gonna start picking shit up. And if they pick shit up, they're gonna run into danger. So let me test something real quick. Oh, you know what? This might do. This might actually do. Yes, okay. Good. Okay, let's grab only the rocks. Good. Okay, let's take the purples. Let's throw the purples there. Okay, we have only rocks. They're safe. I don't have to worry about them. Okay. Yeah, rocks don't give a fuck. Rocks don't care. I don't even believe the fleas are capable of killing rock Pikmin, are they? They wouldn't have enough crushing power, I don't think. Okay. Good, good. How are they at destroying these kinds of walls? Decent, it would appear. Maybe not the most ideal. I think you want red Pikmin for that. Okay, let's grab all this raw material real quick. And then we'll come back over here for the corpses of our enemies. Okay, so I do have a couple options here. What I could do is I could go join up with my other squad of Pikmin. But then I would have to redistribute them. And I would have to re-segregate them, and I don't want to do that. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to make this be a long and arduous process of just cleaning up everything. But that's fine. Okay, I need Ochi with me. Okay, they're dead. Good, good, good. Let's grab our excess rocks. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have a white flower, which I may take advantage of. 
I might end up needing some poisons later on in the cavern, especially if there's something really big that I have to sacrifice them to. I might end up needing to do that. As much as I don't want to, it may be necessary. So the cool thing about the rock pikmin that I discovered is that they can't be crushed by these boulders. They kind of just get tossed to the side and then get back up. But large beasts can kill them. But I don't think small ones can. Shit, that was close. The music in here is also really cool. Okay, so this poses a problem. Oh, no it doesn't. I'm just stupid. Okay. My perceptive ability was not as good as it could have been right there. Okay, so I understand what's going on now. Quick. Nice. Fuck you. Kill that asshole. Nice. Okay. Let's have them get the bell. I knew it was only gonna take two. Pikmin, Jesus Christ, dude. Come on. You know what I want. You know what my desire is. My my, those eyes like fire. Okay, let's get the bell. Now that we have the bell... Wait, is that this entire level completed? I could have sworn there was another portion to this level. Oh no, because I already killed all these assholes, didn't I? Nice, okay. So if that's this level done, then we're good to progress, I think. Yeah, alright, that's this level done. Okay, I'm gonna take five of my rock boys. And unfortunately, we're gonna lose them, but that's okay. That gives me an even 40, so I'll know what to keep track of. Let's bring five white boys. Okay, hop off of Ochi real quick. Sap them up. Sorry, that sounds very weird. And let's go cross 8 Mile and go into the other cavern. Okay. So we successfully kept alive like 99% of our pinks. We only lost one Pikmin, so that's okay. I'm fine losing one pink. That's not terrible. Losses could have been far more exponentially bad there. So I'm grateful that we only lost one. It was a willing sacrifice. Uh-oh. The Slayer looks very big and empty, and that has me greatly concerned. Oh. That's why it's big and empty. That makes sense. A cannon beetle, though. Out of everything you could have given me, you gave me a cannon beetle. As if the cannon beetle even poses a remote danger. Okay, that's fine. Come here, dickhead. Oh, I see what they're doing here. I understand what the dynamic is. Okay, while we don't have his attention... While we don't have his attention, let's take care of all this stuff. Shit. That's how we'll do this. Okay. Let's just stay mobile. Let's be strategic about this. I need to get all the sticky shit off. I can't have the Pikmin be slow here. Okay, let's beat him into a shot real quick. Okay, that'll do. Good, that's fine. Okay. Beat him into another shot. Perfect. There we go. Okay, let's take our flying boys. Good. 
Okay. Nice. He should be dead after that. Very nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy all the memories that are coming back. Wow. That's cool. I haven't seen one of those in several years also. I think the last time I saw one of those one is when I was like six or seven. That's amazing. I love that about this Pikmin. It's fucking incredible that they still remember shit like that, and they threw it in here for a nostalgia throwback. I like that a lot. It's crazy, too, because, like, I forget that the shit exists. It's like relics of the past that they throw in here. It's like if you went to a history museum of Nintendo, you'd find something like that. It's really cool. Oh, it's another leafling, is it? Okay. That's weird. So I'm wondering what the connection is between the leaflings and the regular castaways, because I thought the leaflings were people that you had to cure of Dandori Syndrome. Or whatever the fuck that shit is. But there appears to be castaways just locked away in caverns. That are leafified as well, so I'm wondering what the connection of that is. It's pretty weird. Okay. He looks like a Muppet. He looks like a Muppet character. Okay, so we should be able to cure one of those guys. Alright. That was that layer. Honestly, that was not that bad. So, usually when you descend to another floor and the area is very wide open, it means you're going to have a very bad time. In Pikmin terms, in Pikmin logic. But that level was actually very manageable. Not bad at all. So I'm grateful the game had some leniency there. That could have been very bad.